Back on ABC 24 this week with uh, Otis Sanford, Sam Hardiman, and Susan Edler Thorpe. We're going to talk about uh, the police department now. Uh, C.J. Davis, the new police chief, uh, uh, groundbreaking in many ways in that she was the first African-American female police chief to be hired in Memphis. And uh, city council said, why don't you come on down and, and talk to us about um, uh, what, how your first year has gone, plans you have for the second year. I got to cover this along with my buddy here, Sam Hardiman. Let's uh, show my story here from what uh, she had to say to the council. Chief Davis told the council there's been a 4% reduction in overall crime incidents so far this year, hoping that by December that number will tick up to 5%, citing a number of new units and task forces that she has spearheaded aimed at making the department work more efficiently and targeting where officers are needed most. And while Davis says her department has proven itself to be nimble and adaptable to change, the past year has had its challenges, including having her department issued guns stolen and her home burglarized. As you look back at the first year, any regrets? I mean, you've been a victim of crime yourself twice <laughs> already. Uh, Welcome to Memphis. You know, I guess that's it, huh? Yeah. No, I don't have any regrets at all. Actually, um, I have really enjoyed this year. Davis says in addition to the prevalence of guns, rising property crime, car break-ins and residential burglaries continue to be the Memphis PD's biggest challenge. And she is determined to do something about the city's traffic related issues. The drag racing, speeding and other reckless driving, again based on her own personal experience. As a person that drives the, the streets of Memphis, we've got volume here, but we've got some mean drivers on the road. Which leads us to her ambitious agenda with several more changes starting next month. That's when the department will eliminate the Delta shift and go back to just a three shift schedule so patrols aren't so spread out. A new commander will be solely dedicated to head up this new traffic division. Davis says a city the size of Memphis is long overdue for that. Also, 30 officers will be moved to patrol Memphis's entertainment district. A newly designed patrol car will be hitting the streets and MPD will allow officers to wear tattoos and beards. All right, so Sam, you were there too. You saw that she got a round of applause from all the council members as she uh, took the podium to give her presentation, indicating she still has quite a bit of support, I would say, on the council. Uh, what was your takeaway from her presentation? Uh, not only her what she's accomplished in this first year, but what she's planning to do, some of those things that I highlighted. My takeaway is that the police department is continuing to struggle to fill the roster out. Um, one of the most telling things that she had to say was about um, tattoos and how they are working to abbreviate or moderate the tattoo policy. And that is a direct response to what the rank and file want. The rank and file are largely tattooed. They would like to be able to show their tattoos. And this is a means of keeping people in the ranks and being more accommodating for a people that are my generation or even younger millennial Gen Z um, type of officer. And you know, the data backs that up. The, the police department had about 1,930 officers at the end of April. That's about as low as it's been since 2017. So throughout Jim Strickland's time in office, Mayor Jim Strickland's time in office, they've sought to get to about 2,300 officers, and they've been stubbornly stocked between about 20 and 2,000 and change and 1,900 and change. So I think my biggest takeaway was retention remains an issue, and uh, she sort of undersold that a little bit, I think, to the council. Yeah, she did spend a lot of time talking about the need to change the uh, promotion or rank structure, I guess. Another, go to your point, to try and keep some of these officers, give them more of a chance to uh, uh, advance in their careers, uh, because that's that's related to this as well, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I think she, she wants to make sure that the department is offering a pathway to officers and retaining them, because it is very easy for Memphis police officers after several years of experience um, working a very tough job to then go to a local suburb or somewhere nearby where the job is not as tough, they don't face so many uh, systemic societal issues and get paid the same or more. And so offering people a pathway to advance in the department is what's going to keep people. In, in part. Uh, to, but Sam is saying that that has just been the bane of this mayor. I think he'd be the first to admit it uh, in the time that he's been in office is his determination to try and increase the ranks uh, only to bury, he's not even uh, treading water uh, when it comes to new officers and, and actually growing the complement of officers protecting Memphis. 
Well, I think it just goes to prove that in this day and time, it really is very difficult to recruit new officers. And I think everything that Sam spoke about in retention is critical. Um, there are a lot of officers that are retiring and it's not as easy to go ahead and fill those uh, empty spaces. But changing what C.J. Davis is also doing, and I think it's interesting on the tattoos and the beards because letting officers show their beards, um, I think that that's uplifting to a lot of people, young men and women that, who don't wear beards, of course, but might have tattoos, uh, who want to come into the, to the ranks of the Memphis Police Department, and, and it gives them a sense of change and a sense of modernity that they, can, they, they have a chance to make a career out of this. But also, remember this, she's, she's only been there a year. It, a year's not a very long time. I'm not her apologist. But to turn, to turn a huge bureaucracy like the Memphis Police Department, which is entrenched in an in a old school network, to try and turn it around is a very, very difficult job. And the police department and the administration is just one piece of that puzzle. There are a lot of other pieces that go into that very difficult puzzle. And it goes back to our previous conversation, just for an example about guns. When people have guns, have the responsibility to, to protect those guns and hide those guns, but they leave them on the seats of their cars. Young people come and steal those guns and go and shoot somebody, and then they blame the police for not protecting the community better. Mm -hmm. We as citizens have a piece of that puzzle too. So Absolutely. I, I think she's got, she's got a terribly difficult uh, job on our hands but i say let's give her let's give her another year to see see if those numbers don't edge up a little bit more would you agree on the report card there that uh, susan I, I, just gave i absolutely agree on pretty much everything that susan said especially the culture uh of the police department and let's be honest i mean it's had a fraternal sort of macho culture all all of its existence uh, and so that's another part of the change i absolutely think that it's uh, uh, the right move uh, to relax on tattoos and beards. I mean, that's, that's relics of the past. Uh, and I think that will help retain more officers. One other very quick point, I think she's on, on target by doing more to enforce traffic laws and the speeding and reckless driving in this community. I'm out there all the time commuting back and forth from ch uh, Local 24, I mean, for ABC 24 down to the uh, University of Memphis, and I see speeding cars all the time. So I'm glad to see her addressing that. Uh, amen to that. I couldn't agree with you more. Well, yeah. when we come back, we're going to talk about the possibility that city council members in Memphis and the mayor uh, might get an extension of four more years uh, in terms of their term limit uh, restriction from two to three. And and the likelihood of that passing, number one, because you're going to get a chance to vote on it in August, and who might uh, consider running again for another four years right after this.